Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 8. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made the wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuage, subside. Now that doesn't mean that during this time that God, oh, you know, he forgot about Noah. He just remembered of all this chaos and judgment. And his mind was brought upon Noah after what he said had been done. Everyone's going to die that was in that, in that ark. So everyone, everything breathing is dead. And God calls his mind back to Noah. The fountains also of the deep, that's above our heads, and the windows of heaven were stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained. So this is the end of the 40 days and 40 nights. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated, lessened. I'm just trying to read a note here. <clears throat> and the ark rested the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. So, you can date this, and this all comes back to the date of 711, the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broke up. So, a calendar in this time was based upon Noah's life. So you have here, there's 150 days after the 40 days and 40 nights. The seventh month, the seventeenth day of that month. So, from seven eleven to eight three, it has been five months. And the waters decreased continually unto the tenth month. Add three more months. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. So this is where we're standing right now. If you, you could not stand on the earth because you'd be drowned, but here's this point right now. The mountains are starting to be seen. The ark has settled on one of those mountains where we know it, where it is today, Mount Ararat. I mean, this is judged upon above sea level. We are sea level is at the caps of the mountains. Now, I'm going to say that for a reason because. Picture a mountain. Picture, uh, oh, can't think of that largest mountain everyone's trying to climb now. Mount Everest. And all the other tall mountains. Why do they find fish fossils up there? Why do they find camel bodies and bones up there? Why are they finding buffalo? Because all these dead bodies are floating around the water and all the fish are swimming around the water and it's slowly going down. And as the ark rested upon the Mount Ararat, so are the dead bodies, and some fish are getting caught, getting stuck. There's a scientific answer by the Bible why you find these fossils where you do. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days, another 40, not the 40 days and 40 nights, that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. So you tell me those windows were closed. How sealed was that ark with that pitch? 
and he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro, uh, to and fro, until the wars were dried up from off the earth. He doesn't return. The raven goes, <coughs> and he takes off. Also, he sent forth a dove from him, from inside the ark, to see the layman. Let's go back to seven. Now we got a problem here. He says we're dried up from off the earth until Raven is not a, not a clean animal. So there should be no ravens today. Let's say the male took off. Well, you're left with a female, and you can't. You need a male and a female. So it says, until the water is dried up from off the earth, it looks like that's when it came back. Or maybe before the law, ravens were clean because they were vegetarians. They didn't eat meat inside the road. And he sent forth the dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. So the windows that Noah had in Noah's ark were so high he could not see the ground. They would be like for ventilation. Air, fresh air coming in. But the dove found no rest for her sole of her foot. And she returned unto him into the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth earth is still underwater then he put forth his hand took her and pulled her in pulled her in unto him into the ark so reading words there so the dove goes out she can't find a place to make a home she can't find anything she comes back and he stayed yet other seven days another another week <clears throat> and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark and the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was, <clears throat> was an olive leaf plucked off. It hasn't even been a year yet. We don't even know what, well, we know the seasons. God had to miraculously regrow the plants and food. So here's an olive leaf. And they say it's a type of peach, the olive branch. No, it's not an olive branch. It's an olive leaf. So when you see the, the eagle holding the olives on our money, you got it wrong again. Olive leaf. Not an olive, not an olive branch. An olive leaf. And it's funny because the Bible will speak about fig leaves. <clears throat> but an olive leaf plucked off. So there's leaves. Plants are growing. So Noah knew the waters were abated from off the earth. Alright. But it's still muddy. He stayed there another seven days. Another week. <clears throat> and sent forth the dove which returned not again unto him anymore. It'd be good that he would have more than a male and a female dove because this one does not return, the Bible says. Have you seen a dove in your backyard? There shouldn't be. This one never came back for his mate. So there had to be seven clean pairs of these doves. The raven looks like it it left and it came back if it's an unclean bird <clears throat> and it came to pass in the 600th and first year now let's go back over here oh, where we? verse 11 of chapter 7 in the 600th year of Noah's life in the 600 and first year Noah's a 601 years old in the first month well 11 7 uh, seven eleven. it's the second month so it has been a year and a month the first day of the month the waters were dried up from off the face of the earth and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked 
and behold, the face of the ground was dry. <clears throat> so those windows he couldn't see. He had to remove the roof and get up there and look around and say, yep, I see ground. I see dirt. I see trees. <clears throat> it's been a month in the year. And in the second month, on the 7th and 20, 20th day of the month, was the earth dry. One year and 10 days later from when God had it start raining. They had been in that ark for a year and 10 days. God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wives and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee. And all flesh, bring with thee everything that is living. Noah, you got to take them out of the ark. God brought them in the ark. Why would God now have Noah bring the work out and bring all these animals out? There's no one there to watch. When God lined those animals male by females, unclean, and then the clean animals female by male and female, male and female, you know, seven of them. That was a sign to the world around Noah, something's going to happen. You better listen to that preacher. The Bible records later in Peter that he preached righteousness. And God gave them a sign of these animals. Well, they're all dead. So now you got to bring them on the ark. It's not a testimony for everybody else to see. Both fowl and of cattle and every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. Some of them might have been so tempted to. Oops. He did. And they may breed abundantly in the earth. Now that's the first time that word has shown up. And it's a reference to animals. So, you know, there, there are things that say, you know, a certain way, you know, she's just breeding children. That's not a human term. That's animals. Abundantly in the earth. Now, there's been a lot of animals on this earth. They've done what God told them to do. Especially the creepy things. You can't count the creepy things. Be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. That was the commandment from Genesis 1. Now you put the relations between Adam and Noah all together. Adam had a sweet fellowship with all the animals in earth, so, so did Noah. Now I don't know if Adam met every animal in the world. I don't know. But Noah did. He had them all on his, on his ark. At one point in time, except for the fish and reptiles, he had every single animal in the world in his ark. He probably petted every one of them. He has a wife. Adam had a wife. They both have three children. And they're both told to the animals, go multiply. And they both talked and walked with God. And they both sinned, and then we don't hear from them anymore. Adam did what God told him not to do. And Noah, and even if, I don't know if it's innocence or not, got drunk. <clears throat> but we'll get to that. And Noah went forth, his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. And I wonder what it smelled like in there. And when that door opens, and, and you know what, it doesn't say, there's no door open. Look at 716. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God commanded them, and the Lord shut them in. Well, you know they had to open up the door, but it doesn't say the Lord did it. And can you imagine being locked up with all the animals in the world for a year and ten days? That when you open up that door, you get that whiff of fresh air. Mmm, that smells good. Every beast, every creepy thing. You know that God keeps mentioning the creepy thing. And every fowl whatsoever creepeth upon the earth. After their times, was Genesis 1, went forth <coughs> of the ark. So that's recorded. Nothing stayed in that ark. No animal made that ark their home. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord. Now, 
I'm going to stretch myself out here again. I may be wrong. If I am, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Because I don't want to change the Bible. But if Noah and, and Adam have such great comparisons to each other, I would assume that, though not recorded, somehow Adam may have built an altar to God. And that may be where his sons got the idea. I don't, it's not recorded. But Noah built an altar unto the Lord. And took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Now notice how it says every clean. Because had it not been just a regular animal and Noah takes them and cuts them open and puts them on an altar. Those animals would not be here anymore today. That's why God said of the clean you bring by sevens. The foreknowledge of God, God already knew that Noah was going to build an altar. How do you like that? Knowing that Noah loved God so much that Noah cannot make a mistake because we need clean animals for the law. You can't wipe out the lambs for eternity because the lamb is a symbol of Jesus Christ. Noah, I want you to bring some clean animals in that ark. And he doesn't tell Noah why. And then when Noah gets out of that ark, here he is offering clean animals. God already knew what Noah was going to do. The foreknowledge of God. And the Lord smelled a sweet Savior. So the Lord smells. The Lord smells. I, I'm going to st step out on the line on this one too. <clears throat> The Lord smells every barbecue and then realizes that men don't thank God. They're not doing it for God. We have these holidays in America where they get up the barbecues and they get drunk and they get stupid and they get rowdy and they don't ever thank God. And God smells that like unthankfulness, stupidity, fool. And the Bible says that Incense is the smell to God of our prayers. And the Lord said in his heart. The Lord's talking to himself now. So don't tell someone it's wrong to talk to yourself because you're saying God is wrong. One of the places in Psalms I got marked. He said, I, 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 I talk, it said something I converse with myself. It's normal to talk to yourself. Especially no one else is around. And God does it. I will. Now this is what God says in his heart. I will not again curse the ground. Any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. So when someone says man is good. Man is wonderful. After the flood, after the judgment, God says, you know what? Your, your imagination is, is wicked from your youth. You are born a sinner. And the flood did not stop that. And we are in a time in the world today, worldwide, in 2017, we've got violence in the land. <clears throat> I again smite, never will I again smite anymore everything living as I've done. So, God, there are floods. That tsunami they had in Japan. There are floods in, in the Mississippi Delta. People die. But God's promise here is, I am not going to entirely wipe out the entire earth as I just did. And There will be floods, but no more worldwide flood. The next time I'm going to take care of the earth is I'm going to fold it up and I'm going to burn it up. I'm going to turn it to ashes and smoke. So from Genesis 8 to whenever the Lord at the end of the millennium. Of all the sin from Genesis 8 to the end of the millennium, 
just before the great white throne judgment, God is, this earth has been so polluted by the curse, it has been so wickedified by sin of man, God says, I'm just going to burn it up, I am not going to give it another chance as I did Genesis 1-2. Man has outdone the earth what Satan and his angels did to the earth pre-Genesis 1-2. And from, from Genesis 3 to today, and whatever the end of the millennium, man and Satan has been working together to, to curse this earth even more. Do you realize of all these years how, how much blood cries out to God that have been murdered? And I'm not talking about just America. I'm talking about countries that are no more. Everything living as I have done. You see this in Isaiah 54, 9. While the earth remaineth seed time and harvest, this is what God said when he made the sun and the moon and the stars. And cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Now it's remarkable that this verse 22, you think, oh, okay, we got summer, spring, fall, winter, both. We, got, we can plant, we can sow, we give the land. Right. The, the, the order of, of Genesis 8:22 matches the climate of the land of Israel. And when God says, is he saying this to a man that's in Mount Ararat? There is no Abraham yet. There is no Israel yet. No one is in the land of Palestine right now. There's not even animals in the land of Palestine right now. They're all in Ararat right now. Entire world population of everything living and breathing is in Mount Ararat and God tells us the climate of the future land of his people long before his people are even his people. Isn't God remarkable? Like God already knew that Noah was going to burn some animals for the honor and glory of God. So I, I got to have him take some extra in there. God is so wonderful. The, all the earth is in chaos, and Noah and his family are just floating on top of it. And God says, okay, that's done. Check the calendar. It's at the right time. There you go. Open up that door and go. And that's where we leave off.